Way before the 90s, when computer peripherals were developing, keyboards were all mechanical. One of the earliest, most popular ones were the Model M keyboard with buckling spring keys by IBM. Ever since this creation, we've been used to the QWERTY and full-size layout of the function keys on top row and numpad on the right side. Ever since this creation, full-size keyboards are still well-loved and preferred by others. What makes it significantly stand out is having that nice numpad on the right side. Having this is perfect for data entry like Excel users or for typing passwords or bank account numbers. Not only that, more keys means more macros, right? Who needs a separate macro pad when you've got it all in one full-size keyboard? Now, with the ever-growing hobby of custom mechanical keyboards, many types of sizes have been created to get rid of that function keys and the right numpad, like the 60% or 10 keyless. My favorite keyboard size is definitely the 40%, of course. Why? Because why not? It's adorable and I love using layers. Size does not matter. What matters is how you use it. But for some, a full-size keyboard is the way to go. Now, for me to explore more is to actually try one for myself. So today's video is going full on, full size with the Techware Spectre Pro. I decided to go with this keyboard because out of all the budget-friendly keyboards we all know and love like Royal Clutch, Gamma K, Red Dragon, GK61, Ajaz, Techware just stood out for me in terms of its design, quality and features. The packaging is not that bad comes with a cardboard box with the details stated on it with some protective thin foam covering and a neat plastic dust cover to protect from the obnoxious cat fur or dust included with a detachable 1.8 meter nylon braided USB-C cable and some extra knickknacks Here we have the key switch puller, keycap puller and some extra O2 switches. Though I really wish keyboards nowadays should come with better keycap pullers, come on. Instead of this little plastic one, this long wired one makes a better fit because it takes out more keycaps and doesn't scratch that much. Anyways, do you know how hard it is to find a full size keyboard that's budget friendly yet still has a rotary knob and is hot swappable? Until I stumbled upon the Spectre Pro, of course. Right out of the box, it's a solid, hefty keyboard, weighing about 1.16 kgs. Pretty hefty and big. The build quality is great. The black frame is made of plastic and has a metal alloy backplate that makes it feel premium, sturdy, and still look good. It comes with a built-in stand that you can flip it open and four rubber feet. The stand sits pretty well, slightly elevated and not too high. Just perfect for me. You can choose between three switch options, which are blue, red or brown. The one I have are the brown Otomo switches. It doesn't have a strong tactility, but still has a low bump that feels nice and not too loud. The plastic keycaps are double shot ABS. It feels quite thin and light. For those who type a lot, it may cause shine after a while. I wish it had used PBT keycaps like the Techware B68 instead, but you can always change them anyways. The features that stood out for me is the volume knob. I really like the RGB rim around it and the ability to control the volume. And the beautiful, gorgeous RGB underglow of the side light. It's stunning, it's bright, still looks amazing in daylight. Not to mention, you can customize the RGB color of the knob, keys, and the side lights. The Spectre Pro comes with its own software where you can customize macros and the LED lights. The software can be downloaded from the Techware's official website. It's simple and easy to navigate. By the way, you cannot customize the knob functionality as it's only used for the volume control. The downside of the software is that it is not compatible with macOS and I can't find a way to switch between the three layers using the function key. So I can change to whichever profile I want, but unfortunately I couldn't do that. Now, the one thing that irks me in terms of customizability is the hot swapping of this keyboard. 
I adore that it has a hot swappable PCB, but it does have a protruding SMD LED that makes it compatible to only certain switches that supports this. If you noticed, there are some switches that have holes and some do not. The ones that have holes or slits are called SMD switches, may work well with the Spectre Pro. Even then, not all brands will fit the Spectre Pro as I noticed some people mentioned Gatron switches have wider and bigger metal pins than Otomo's, and you can go all the way by modifying the metal pins by filing it down to make it smaller and fit through the PCB. I wouldn't recommend it as it may cause damage to your precious switches, but you can always do it at your own risk. So yeah, there's that. Not to mention, the plate is super tight. Pulling out the switches? Wow, was time consuming and using the key switch puller? No, it wasn't helping. So I went for a flathead screwdriver and it worked like a charm. I wish they improved the plate to have it fit better for easier hot swapping. So far, the switches I tested that fit the Spectre Pro were Boba Gazoo switches, other Otimus, Kale boxes, and Akko CS switches. So I'm all about modding the keyboard and the sound of the rattly space bar, it's just... Um, too rattly for me and the pinginess of the Otomus just have to go. So I took out all the Otomu switches, lubed and filmed them, then I put them back in. By the way, Otomus are notorious for the difficult and tight latch. A tip for those who don't have a switch opener, you can take a safety pin and wedge it in between the top opening and pry both sides until the top housing lifts right off. Oh. As for the spacebar, I wanted to do the holy mod, but then I realized, wait, um, I ran out of band-aids, so then it got me thinking. What could be the best replacement for band-aids? Then it hit me, well, cotton pads. I didn't have anything else, so cotton pads it is. But still, it makes a great alternative for band-aids because you can control the amount and size when putting it in the stabs. So if you want the mushy padded feeling, then put more cotton. If you want less of that, less cotton, easy. I'm gonna call it as the cotton pad mod for stabilizers. I made a separate video for it in detail, so do check it out. By the way, the cable port for this keyboard may not fit bigger or thicker sized cable like my call cable here, so you might have to modify the edges yourself. Anyways, it wouldn't be a keyboard video without a proper sound test, so enjoy! The final question is, who would I recommend this keyboard for? For anyone that doesn't mind having more space taken up on their desk? For those that want a budget-friendly keyboard? People who use numbers or data entry a lot and loves the numpad? People who like to use macros, more keys, more macros to put? Or for those that are tired of their membrane keyboard and want to switch to a mechanical one? The Spectre Pro is for you. To be honest, a full-size keyboard has full functionality and anyone can use it. I've been using this for two weeks. I find it way easier to use numpad instead of the number row when editing keyframes in Premiere Pro. And I like the enter button on the side. Plus, I use Adobe macros like redo, undo, control L on the numpad so it helps out a lot. And if you're not a fan of the stock black keycaps, you can always change them to something more vibrant or any keycap profile you like. The choice is yours.
Overall, it's a stunning, budget-friendly, yet still a very customizable keyboard. And I really love typing on this thing. I wish they made a Bluetooth version of this. That would be perfect. So check out the Techware Spectre Pro. Thanks for watching, guys.